Hello again. In the previous video, I showed you how to calculate the velocity of a weight that was moving because of rope being uh, pulled through a bunch of pulleys. And we showed that there was a mechanical advantage to doing this. I thought I'd do one more with a couple extra pulleys in it so you can see that the method we used is general, that you can use it for any kind of geometry. So this is similar to the first video, but I've got two extra pulleys here. This one and this one didn't used to be there. Now if you remember, or maybe if you hadn't seen the video before, the way you do this is you calculate the length of the rope that goes through all the pulleys and you express it as a sum of a bunch of lengths, that one and these here and some others. And then look at the time derivative of that because velocity is going to be the time derivative of position, which in our case is time derivative of uh, lengths of segments of this rope. Okay, this is as much a bookkeeping problem as it is anything else. So let's call this point here A maybe, and this length here we'll call SA. Now, you'll recall that S is a variable we usually, it usually gets used to uh, uh, describe a distance or a length or something, so S is pretty typical. Now, let's go here and we'll call this SB. Okay. Now I went to there for a reason. That's the different. That's the distance between the axles on these on these uh, uh, sets of pulleys here. This distance right here, I'm going to call h. You can call them anything. I'm calling them these. The last thing we don't know is we don't know the the distance around the perimeter of that pulley. And so let's let's call that sp for pulley. Okay. And so there's one, two, three, four of this distance SP. Now right there, the rope's only going over a quarter of the pulley, so that'll be SP over two. Now it turns out none of this stuff really matters. The SP doesn't matter, and that H doesn't matter, because they aren't changing. Because if they don't change, then their time derivative must be zero. But we'll show that here in a second. All right, so all i got to do now is write out the length of the rope as a uh, function of all this stuff here. I'll add, add all this up. So the length, whatever that is, it's going to equal SA plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times SB plus H plus 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half times SP. Okay? So far, so good. We've got the length of the rope. We don't know what it is, but it's a, it's the a, a sum of all these things here. Okay, so let's look at now. Let's take the time derivative of this, the, the change in this with respect to time, and I'm just going to write this out here. dl dt equals dsa dt plus five times dsb dt. Now, remember that since that 5 is a, is a coefficient out in front of this, I can push that 5 outside the derivative, okay? Plus dh dt plus 4.5 dsp dt. Well, it looks like all I really did here is, is write out a bunch of derivatives, and it doesn't maybe look like I've made any progress towards a solution. But there's a couple of things we know here. Number one, we know the rope's not getting any longer. If the end was here and we pulled it out to there, we moved the end, but the, the, the change there came from in here somewhere. The length of the rope didn't change. So that goes to zero. Okay, that's, that, we don't know what that is. We don't know what that is. H, H is the same no matter what. These are little linkages, those are fixed. So that little bit of rope right there, the length of that doesn't change either. So that's zero. Now, dsp uh, dt, well, the, the, the half circumference of those pulleys doesn't change. The pulleys don't change shape, so that's also a zero, right? Now we're getting somewhere. Let's go up here now, and we can say dsa dt plus 5 dsb dt equals zero. Well, it's a lot simpler but we've still got those uh, derivatives in there. So how do we get rid of those? Well, change in length with respect to time sure looks like a velocity, doesn't it? This is VA plus 5VB. OK, 
Okay, that's the, the change in that uh, position right there is BB, which is also, I guess I should write this out now, equals that, which is also expressed there. Right, so we're almost there. If I know what this is, and that's VA right there, I can figure out VB. So let me erase some, some of uh, this stuff here, clear out some room. And let's see, let's solve for VB now. That has to equal zero. So, VB equals minus VA over 5. Now that minus there might be a little bit of a head scratcher. Let's look at what our assumed coordinate system is. Probably should have written that in first, but there's our coordinate system. If A is moving that way, the velocity of A is minus 5. So I'm going to put in minus 5 for that. And what I'll get is positive 1 meter per second. Well, since Y positive goes up, that's 1 meter per second up. So there you go. There's the answer. This is the exact same uh, uh, problem solution strategy that we used before. Just one other thing. I wonder what, how you would figure out the uh, tension required in the rope. Let's say this weighs 1,000 newtons. Okay. Well, what tension would I be uh, uh, applying here to make this go up at a steady state? No acceleration. Okay. Just, just steady state. Well, let's see. If I wanted to do this, if we're doing statics, I can make a cut anywhere I want, right? Well, the force in the rope is the tension. Let me, let me clear some more room out here. Okay. And we'll very creatively call the tension T. And let me do something else here. Let me, let me put a cut, a fictitious cut, right there. And let's see, there's tension, there's tension, there's tension, there's tension, there's tension. All right, now I'm assuming the pulleys are frictionless. So there's T, 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 T. So one, two, three, four, five T equals a thousand newtons. All right, means T must equal 200 newtons. Right? So there's that mechanical advantage we keep talking about. Now you don't get something for nothing by being able to exert a lower tension, a lower force on the rope by a factor of five. The speed at which the weight rises goes down by a factor of five. Okay? So energy is conserved. So there you go.